WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We, we've outdone ourselves today. They've been telling me for years about this crab cake that's not a crab cake. It's a vegan crab cake, and folks have told me about the land of Kush and uh, our friends at Goodwill and our friends at Window Nation. We put this thing together, and it's my first ever vegan crab cake stop and I finally we had Naj on here earlier uh, we had Brooke Learman here telling a little bit of the story you were here when I first tasted it yes you see that look on people's face all the time right they're like <laughs> vegan I had somebody say it ain't a real crab cake it's not vegan and I'm like all right well, I'm gonna give it a shot a lot of people have vouched for it this is delicious what you guys do down here. So thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming down. Now, you said this segment's all going to be about Greg. So yes. tell me about this guy here. Yes, Who Greg. Is now, you're guy. a team. This, we're this we're a team. Greg, and he made me do all of this stuff that's going on at the Land of Cushion. Not everything, but most all right, of it. All right, first idea to do this, to say we're going to open a vegetarian restaurant. We're going to do it in, in Baltimore City. Had you seen anything like this before, Greg? Yes. There was a famous restaurant called the Yabba Pod. Um, and I used to frequent that spot all the time. And the owner, uh, very much an inspiration to um, me doing it because uh, she showed me that you could have, like, really cool food and it was vegan. And, you know, I Did was she like, call it soul food, too? Was it? No, nah, she was more Caribbean. So she was, she's from uh, St. Croix. I think Sky was from, is from St. Croix. So, uh, but she ended up moving down to Atlanta. Um, I had always had the vision of owning my own business. And so what I did was is um, I started to write a business plan and put things together. I was journaling. And so uh, I was trying to figure a way to get out of corporate America. If you, What were you doing? I was doing call centers. I was working uh, as a supervisor for a call center. Listen to that voice he's got. I'd buy from you. <laughs> I will sell to you all day. Uh, I what? You. <laughs> what? I will sell it. That's, the, that's how he well, sells you, himself to me. See, dude, you sold me on a vegan crab cake and got yeah, me down here. Listen. I, listen, I've had a lot of people. Uh, I started the crab cake tour about two years ago. And I've had a lot of people... Uh, mention that they're vegan or they're uh, shellfish intolerant, you know, they, they, they have an allergy, whatever it is, and they've mentioned this place. Also Gertrude's at the, at the, at the art museum. They uh -huh. also do a vegan. And okay. these are the two places that I would... I could invite my vegan or vegetarian. Now, Brooke is pescatarian. I okay. thought she was... Uh, Theroux's vegan. Odette Ramos, uh, Councilwoman Ramos, she's also vegan. So they've all said your place. They've all tried it. And this is a mecca for... for People who love vegetables, period, right? Sure. We kind of came at the right time. I mean, the Yabba Pot. Uh, Where was Yabba Pot? Tell me it was right that. on St. Paul Street. Okay. It was on St. Paul, just below 25th. Uh, it was the first, uh, I'm not going to say it was the first vegan spot, but it was the, It was like the popular vegan spot for a long time. And so uh, Scott ended up moving down to uh, Puerto Rico. And so. But you uh, are vegan? I'm vegan, 100% vegan. All your life? Not all my life, no. Uh, I. I uh, well, I used to listen, I'm not used to, but I still listen to this guy, KRS-One, who's a famous hip-hop oh, artist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he always preached a vegetarian lifestyle uh, early on, and I was always trying to change my diet. So I was moving towards this vegan lifestyle, and I ended up finding this book with 500 recipes because I didn't know any vegans. I didn't know any vegetarians. Found this book with 500. Why did you want to become a vegan? Uh, uh, for just health reasons? Health or reasons. Eth ethical reasons? He health reasons, ethical reasons. Um, KRS did this song called Beef. Talking about um, uh, farming and how bad they treat the cows. So I was like, I don't want to eat any more beef. So I cut out beef. I read Malcolm X's autobiography. I cut out pork. And then how it was, long ago? Turn of the century? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, nineteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, two thousand was the century. <laughs> no, no, no. I say that a lot now because we're twenty-two <laughs> years into the century. Yeah, I know, That's right? Funny. It's hard to believe. But no, this was. I mean, I guess prior to the turn of the century, when I found the book. Do you haven't eaten, you haven't eaten meat this in twenty years? No, 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 no. Okay, no, I haven't. No, nah, no, nah. it's been way more than that. Late nineties. So you were you were in this lifestyle of eating all vegetables, being vegan, yeah. long before you had a concept to do a restaurant. Sure. And then I was working at this call center, and I didn't like, uh, I didn't feel like I was fulfilling my purpose. So I started journaling. This uh, church elder came to me and said, "Write down your questions for God. Listen for the answers and write down the answers." So in the process of doing that, I came up with the. I was like, "Yo, I want to own my own restaurant, and uh, I wanted to be vegan because I just became vegan." And so I was like, "You know, spirit was like, why not?" And so like, go ahead and do it. So I I was already prepping meals because I already cooked for myself. I was a single guy living on my own. Well, you're vegan. You gotta cook for yourself. You gotta unless you find a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So but when I found when I found this book. Uh, I actually took it home. I bought it, took it home, 
pulled a trash can can up to my refrigerator, threw everything in the trash. So I had fish in the freezer. I had uh, butter, the big country thing of butter, the eggs, the milk. I threw everything in the trash and was like, I'm vegan. And it happened to be a Japanese cookbook, too. So it was based on macrobiotics. And so everything was foreign from me. I'm from Baltimore. Like Baltimore City, we don't know. I, I don't necessarily know about tofu. You and, recognize the rice. But I, <laughs> that was about <laughs> it. You know, shiitake mushrooms and daikon. But I threw everything in the trash and I was like, yo, I'm vegan right now and started and started doing more cooking then i started bringing dinners to work and then after a while people were like hey that smells pretty good can you bring me a dinner and so yeah i can bring you one for a small fee so where do you come into this okay so then i got laid off from this job i ended up doing this festival uh called jazzy summer nights it used to be in front of city hall so they would do this they they still do it every first thursday shout out to finney um and d chase but they do this every first thursday but at that time it was in front of city hall came out there with a friend of mine did did the event every first thursday and every night we sold out the first night we sold out of food in an hour the now, event- what were you selling what was popular at, at- it wasn't what was popular it was what i could cook and so <laughs> mac and cheese right no it wasn't even that i had like I had like uh, some tempeh, I had cabbage and potatoes, I had rice and beans, but I laid it out at 6 o'clock. The event was from 6 to 10. We sold out of food at 7 o'clock. So I was selling water and juices for three hours. Then, uh, so every time Man, we, this is an inspiration and perspiration. Hey, story. I hope this so. Is, yeah, it's sweating. I love this. Hard work. And so every time we went out there, we would sell out of food early. So I was like, yo, there's a way to do this, so I need to recoup some money. So I went to work for Verizon Wireless, where I met this lovely young lady. And um, was she in sales? No, no, no. no. I actually was. I relocated from the New Jersey location of well, you Verizon up, Wireless. You yeah, up. my wife's a so, Verizon okay. engineer. Yeah. Thirty-one years. Oh, oh wow, okay. wow, okay. wow! Nice. So we were on the wireless side, and they were shutting down that center in Morristown, and um, you know, I got I got down here. And um, what did you think of Baltimore when you got here? Well, I've always been a fan of The Wire. I didn't think I'd be living in The Wire. But, you know, when I got down here, I was excited. I'm like, yo, law of attraction. Um, <laughs> right on. I was on a health journey because when I got down here, I got a physical because you got to find a new doctor and everything. Okay. And I'm thinking I'm healthy, eating all this egg and pizza and stuff like that. And then I found out my cholesterol at age 33 was sky high and if i didn't do something about it i was gonna have to be yeah yeah, that and then on meds and i'm holistic so that means i don't take meds were you heavier at the time or no 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 no. well i was getting kind of chunky you wouldn't know until you you give blood that you you have an issue right so it was just too high and then greg happened to be on the same leadership team as myself in customer service and and he made you lunch yeah well it was interesting because he was bringing these interesting dishes to work and i was on a a journey of trying to find out what I'm going to do in Maryland because I used to be a nightclub promoter and oh, all this right, other sure. stuff back in, 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 in back up north. Oh, gee, got it. Yeah, so he said he was trying to open his restaurant and I was I don't know about food service because I've never worked in food service ever, not even as a teenager, but I know how to market the hell out of stuff. So if I'm passionate about it, and here we are, 11 years later. My with, wife yeah. had one Boy, question. So my wife this morning, Greg, by the way, Greg and Nodger here, I want to get all the names right. Not your right brown. She's got the right stuff. And Greg Brown. Uh, partners in life in the team at Land the Kush here uh, and, and, and doing the vegan crab cake. That The yum yum sauce. Well, I'll talk about the crab cake and all that. <laughs> My wife this morning, uh, and she's never done this on the crab cake tour because she didn't know about she knew about you, but she never looked at the menu, right? Sure. She knew about the vegan place. Because my wife loves vegetables. We eat a lot of vegetables. You know, I eat everything, but I love vegetables. I don't, I don't, I don't have any problem eating five vegetables on my plate. Sure. I eat Indian food all the time, and I go mm-hmm. nuts for the cauliflower and the potatoes and the spinach. I mean, it's one of my thing. But this morning, I'm brushing my teeth, and she comes in, and she's got her little pad, and she's got your menu up. And she's like, I'd eat this. I'd eat this. You're bringing this home. You're bringing this home. You're bring-. So, oh, But wow. she said... Land the Kush. Can you ask them about the Kush part of this thing here? Because she thought this was a cannabis dispensary. Yeah, she didn't. Know. Everybody thinks that, especially the the young the young kids we go and talk to. Maybe uh, you move something next door. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Hey, Maybe, you, you know, know if I could get you a got license, a brand. You I got, got a brand. brand you know? I, if I could get a license. Um, but what happened? I study African history, so Kush is ancient Nile Valley civilization. So I wanted to bring awareness to uh, Black history on a global scale. Not necessarily just to, you know, so I could be a historian, but 
just for people to ask questions. So why do you call it Kush? Oh, black history is all over the world. And so like, so, so when I go to talk to the kids, like they can ask. They think it's cannabis just like everybody else. And then I can say, I can start talking about black history. And then they can go do research on their own. I don't got to pound them over the head. And I don't have to actually, you know, step in and say, hey, do you know about black history? And, you know, this part of Africa, like I don't have to do all of that. I make them ask the question. And then I can talk about it. And as you can see, the artwork kind of gives you some semblance of that as well so um get an opportunity to just i get an opportunity to talk about history you know just based on the name so well you do all of this and you put some food together yeah and then stevie wonder pulls up outside stevie wonder pulls up out of the blue <laughs> like one day you know one saturday no call ahead no call ahead nothing nothing, <laughs> nothing. i just get a phone call from one of my staff Man, is he vegan yeah uh, I assume he, so. Yeah, yeah. They Google. Be. They Google. Thank okay. you for Google. Yeah, so okay. he, he, he wanted to eat vegan that day. So I get a phone call. I come downstairs and... You know, Stevie wanted to sit out in the truck right in front of the restaurant. Did and he so, sing to you or anything? Nah, nah. You know what I would have done? I would have said, Stevie, I'll make you anything you want. You, you got to sing Overjoyed for me. That's no, it. I was, I was terrified. <laughs> All the time. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Come on. You yeah, know, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, living in the city is for me. But um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. My wife and I saw Stevie. It's true. I want to tell this on the air. Three years ago down at National Harbor, mm-hmm. he played a, a gig, and the tickets prices were going down a little bit. Right. And... Tickets were dropping. They're ba- dropping band seats. My, I said to my wife, it's going to be cheap enough. Let's just get in the car and go down there. Put, put something on. Let's go. We're, we're going to jam with Stevie. When are we going to get a chance to do this? We got in the car right in front of Camden. We live downtown at the harbor. We got in front of Camden. There was a look down on my phone. Two tickets in the front row popped up wow. on the app. And they were like affordable. They're like $100. I went boom, boom. Bought them. I just turned to her be- right in front of M&T Bank Stadium making the turn. I said, I just got us two front row seats for tonight. She's like, you're kidding me. I'm like, and I didn't pay $500. I didn't do anything stupid. I was right, like, yeah, they yeah. were just there, and they were, on, they were in the fr- and we, so we sat in the front row for Steve. Yeah, I, like, I love Steve. Awesome. He didn't see us, but we yeah, saw sure, him. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> he right? He didn't know we were there, right. but I was happy to be as close to him as yeah, we were. And yeah. he sang over joy for me that night. Oh, so. that's, that's what's that up. Nice. Yeah, so he came, he ate. And then he came back was the next day. Was this when he played the arena? We went to that no, show, too. No, 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 it wasn't. He did songs in the key of life at the arena. Right, but he was here for, he has family here. So he was here for like a funeral or something. Oh, wow. And so, um, so what happened was, is uh, like, yeah, he came, ate. Nobody knew he was here because he was sitting in the corner. Um, and then he got, he was sitting over in the corner and nobody knew he was here cause people were just coming in and out. And so, uh, he had to go to the bathroom. He got up, went to the bathroom, came out, somebody, I peed him. in the same bathroom. Yeah. Still wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and then they started asking for autographs. Everybody went crazy. It was cool. Great. And then the next day I'm telling the customer about it right here in front of the register. And sure enough, the truck pulls up again. What did he order? Uh, he ordered the drummies. He ordered rice. He ordered, uh, what else did he order? He ordered the ribs. He ordered the yams. My wife says to me, so I brush me. She said, like, they got chick on there. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. Chick on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, exactly. Hey, you're a guy that loves puns, man. So, yeah, you got to get it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, he ordered a bunch of different stuff, but he must have liked it. He came back the next day, ordered some more food, sat down and chilled out. And, yeah, it was great. It was an awesome, awesome day. I knew I was going to like you guys. Yeah, yeah, we became national that day. Well, international, good. actually. International. Give her something yeah, to promote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, she'll, she'll yes, promote yes, any. absolutely. Yeah, she'll All promote right, so anything. listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close a segment like this because um, I want everybody to come down. We're at the Land of Kush. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery, your friends at Window Nation, as well as Goodwill. Um, I'm taking food home to my wife. She's counting on me. Right. We uh, went and got some Thai the other night, so we got a little some noodles laying around. We got some things at the house, a little pizza from Pizza John's. Um, but I'm responsible for dinner tonight. Sure. We eat almost everything. Okay. Like, and we obviously eat a lot of vegetables. I mean, I, we, we, I, why are vegetables dogged on? You know what I mean? Like, somebody say, I'm eating a vegetarian place. Like, you don't eat, ve- like, you've never had a potato. Like, you've right. never had a green bean. Right. What's wrong with oh, you? You've never just, had a piece of fruit. You know, just <laughs> skip the ribs and the chicken and the, just get the. I love soul food. So, there, she was reading the menu, the yams, all this. I'll eat any <laughs> of it. If you're going to put a plate together for two people in Timonium, just want to bring some food home, wow. what, what, what do you recommend? If I bring six, six of your. Plat, six of your God. dishes, like six, six, seven, okay, eight dollars. Okay, so no, I just I, I want to spend 30, 40 bucks, and I want to bring some food okay. home, and I want to try 
five or six things here. So let's go. Let's go. Ribs, mac, kale. Yes. Ribs. So what about ribs? What, what the, kind of- the ribs are made from soybeans. Um, the most popular dish that we have here: mm-hmm. homemade barbecue sauce with potatoes and other vegetables in it. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome dish. Uh, the mac and cheese. We make a homemade cheese. I, I had already eyed that up. Okay. I was yeah. all, everybody. I was, everybody. I was eyes that up. even if you told me you didn't like it. Yeah. I was yeah. Gonna I, get it. Yeah. I get a scoop every day. Um, and then the kale salad, homemade kale salad with uh, garlic avocado dressing. And then also, so, oh, man. I would say the drumming. Are they the, hearing the order you're making for me right um, now? Uh, they, they probably <laughs> are. Whatever this is, this is what yeah, I want. Yeah, I got you. And then we'll do, you had the cucumber tomato salad. So I would do drummies. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Potato salad. You said potato oh, salad. Oh, man, yeah, drummies. Potato salad. You like potato salad. Potato yeah. salad. And. I just want your six best items I got that you, you I'll love. Hook you up. And you love, I want to okay. take them home, okay. and then I'm going to come back and get six more. Okay. All That's right. what I'm going to do. All I'm, right? I'm going to set you up. Because we're coming down Monday night uh, for the Raven celebration at the Meyerhoff. Nice. Uh, the 20th anniversary. And nice. uh, I wrote a book on that. Um, um, you guys Ravens fans? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, go I'm Ravens. I'm going to give you a copy of Purple Rain 2 there. Nice. Uh, thank you for no hosting this. No, thank hey, you. thank yeah. you for introducing Appreciate me you. to this delicious this meal. Fun Whatever. Cuisine. What's in that yum yum there? I can't tell you all my secrets. You <laughs> That's know not the same thing they put on then a Tabachi grill. And then I got to take you out to. Uh, Montana it's and leave you out there with the bears. There. <laughs> I gotta take you out if to it's Montana. Brown light out, it's black fight back. That's all you need to know about the bears. Okay. Um, Thanks for taking the call, Naji. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you for yeah, yeah, no problem. Down, right? That's, appreciate you coming down. Nice folks here. We're at the land of Kush. Come on down. It's at Utah and uh, and Martin Luther King, right around the corner from the Meyer off, very close to the Lyric, very close to my alma mater, the University of Baltimore. Oh, yes. there you go. I don't tell everybody. It says Angelos on the wall, so I'm yeah, a little... That's okay. Like, <laughs> I'm Nestor. We are WNST. On behalf of our friends at the Maryland Lottery, as well as Goodwill, and the two-for-one windows. Boy, I got I got fitted today for my new windows. Two-for-one at Window Nation. And my friend Chloe here, who is uh, doing intern day one. The summer from hell for the girl from South Carolina. Back for more WNST and Baltimore Positive right after this.